Hello everyone, it is the Banta Guy here, and welcome to another movie review. Today we have Godzilla, yes, the recent 2014 release of Godzilla, the most awesome monster from movie history, in my opinion. So, Godzilla, where to start? Um, I don't really want to do this in chronological order today, because the story, I mean, it's, it's a good story, and it? The, the mythos is good. But the story is a bit hit and miss, really, because it starts out with Godzilla, um, or like a bunch of like filler images, so like old 60s and 50s stuff, you know, like nuclear tests and, um, you know, man's destruction and it's stuff like that. Um, but the film, okay, I'm, I'm going to start off by talking about the negatives. Um, so I'm probably gonna annoy a few people here, um, but Brian Cranston's role as the scientist Brody, his uh, his total time in the film is about twenty minutes, and he was in most of the trailer footage. So quite irritating, but. I'm, well, it's very interesting actually, because he was like the main, the the marketing, and I even, like, I talked to several people, and they they were going to see it just because Brian Cranston was in it, and knowing he's only in it for a quarter of the film, is quite irritating. So, whether or not you mind about Brian Cranston's role in the film is up for your opinion, but to be honest, I didn't like the fact that he was the main marketing ploy and yet he was barely in it. Secondly, in terms of negatives, I'd say it's the cutaways. Like, it's a little clever movie trick, it's good for a laugh, but um, they did it five times, I think? Maybe six? Basically, Godzilla is up and ready for battle, he's got to the fighting arena, which is often quite barren as it is, and the, the Muto, his enemy, is also readying up. Um, and you see these two big monsters, you're like, oh yeah, this is going to be an awesome fight, just like Pacific Rim. And then nothing happens. It cuts away to some television or some news report of that, with very little sound, very little intensity, and it just got annoying and very irritating. And... It just, uh, I think, like, the first two times it did it, the audience got a laugh. I laughed a little bit, because I thought it was kind of... It's a bit of light humour, I mean. Like, the first time they do it um, is in Hawaii. The two monsters are running up. The female, or no, the, the male Muto and Godzilla are both at each other. And uh, then it, it cuts away to the family of our sub-protagonist, in my opinion. Because Brian Cranston was the protagonist, in my opinion. Because he his story was interesting, he was well formed, he was a good character. Brian Cranston's a brilliant actor, as you all should know. Um, but uh, it was just the fact that every time, for the first like forty-five to fifty minutes of the film, every time the monsters got near each other, it was just a cutaway. Kinda really annoyed me. So. Yeah, but in, in terms of the actual monster fights, when you do see them, they are spectacular. They are marvels to witness. Now, while Pacific Rim had big monster fights, I never really believed they were there. Whereas this was like Jurassic Park, where you honestly believed what you were seeing was very real. Like the CGI, the way Godzilla is rendered, the way he is shot, the atmosphere when he is around is brilliant and I would go so far as to say there has never been a Godzilla as compelling as the one in this film. That said, I wish I could have seen more of him because he is in the film a lot, I mean obviously it's Moon Godzilla, but he's in it for like such brief segments and his biggest segment is at the end, obviously. Um, but I just got really bored waiting for that big payoff. So, and the, I mean, the payoff is big at the end, 
but it's nothing you weren't expecting. I know that's probably a bit stupid to say, but at the end, when everything was said and done, and once Godzilla had beat the two Mutos and was heading back to the sea, I just felt a bit underwhelmed, really, because the fight itself is spectacular, and the way he fights is how you'd expect a giant, you know, 100-story monster to fight, but it seemed to me that Godzilla was a bit too predictable because and the other thing is Godzilla okay he may have been a big monster who was destroying things and you, you can see the destruction that he causes just by moving like he is a bull in a closet china shop so it's a very you know I mean it's, it's obvious he's gonna break stuff but I felt like they were trying to make him too much the hero like, you never specifically see anyone die as a direct result of him. Like, you, like when he's in Hawaii, you see the tsunami of him just approaching, which is quite, you know, it's, it's, it's quite a sad thing to see, but that's not necessarily... I'm, I'm trying to find the right wording here, because he felt like he was... like they were trying to make him too much the hero. Like, there's a point when he's by the San Francisco Bridge, and he grabs onto the support, but he grabs onto it softly so as not to break it. He's a hundred story monster. I mean, surely he would have shattered the thing. Um, and the other thing was the military in this film are thick. Like, they make the American military, granted, they can sometimes make bad decisions, but they made them stupid. Like, their plan for getting the monsters away from the city and killing them is feed them essentially because the, in the mythos of this new film uh, Gojira and the Tumutos are relying on radiation which meant millions of years ago when the planet was more radioactive they could swarm it on the surface when it became less radioactive they retreated down to under like undersea volcanoes to get their radiation like straight from the Earth's core, but <laughs> to replace that, when they come back to the surface, the military or they they seek out and eat nuclear warheads. Now the military's plan was to send a military warhead out of out to the sea, and then what they do is they would attract the beasts, and the blast from this would kill them. Aside from the fact that in the 1950s, those tests that were conducted in the Pacific that were supposed to kill Godzilla barely scratched him. So the military are stupid. Uh, and the other thing is, they constantly attack Godzilla, even though it's pretty damn obvious, even to the most blatant onlooker, that he is supposed to be the person who you're relying on. Because like, there's even the point when he, when he says... Um, Godzilla is the alpha predator, let them fight, and so on and so forth. Um, but I feel like, in terms of how Godzilla was orchestrated in the film and how he was presented, it was good, but it was a bit like, like some people would describe him as the anti-hero because his destruction was, like, we are nothing to Godzilla, but even so, he was too nice for my liking, like, uh, it's hard to try and phrase this. I mean, you, you probably think, well, Godzilla was nice, he was killing people. Yeah, but he never directly did it. So it just, it just made me feel like... And like there was even that headline at the end of the film where it's like, Godzilla, King of Monsters, Saviour of Our City? Question mark. Um, so, I don't know. I mean, I hope in the sequel, Godzilla's presented as much more of a beast. And even though Godzilla has his own personality, which is like, you know, I am the alpha predator, I am the biggest badass ever, which I quite, I, you know, I kind of like that in a in a monster, but um, I want him to be a bit more, um, sound like kind of bloodthirsty, but I want Godzilla to be more violent, because he's a hundred story monster, the slightest, like, he seemed to have the best temper management of anyone, because if you're getting shot in the face by missiles and bullets constantly, you'd kind of want to make that stop. Because it can't be doing... I mean, you may it may be nothing to you, but it can't be doing your body any good. So surely you'd want to sh stop that. 
I mean, I guess I know that if I was Godzilla, I'd probably smash the ships way into the upper atmosphere because um, it's annoying. It's really, really annoying. Maybe that's just me. That that was my problem with that. The story is what I want to talk about now, which was presented well at the start. I mean, it was interesting. There was a lot of mystery surrounding what was going on, even for someone who, like myself, loves the Godzilla franchise. But I. F it's just the story is now just after the first 20 minutes and after Brian Cranston's character died I was just sort of like yeah I'm sort of bored now because their main actor uh, Aaron Taylor Johnson um, he was supposed to be the heroic soldier who saves the city by um, s destroying the eggs of the female Muto and sending out the nook way out to lure the monsters away and stuff like that. He was supposed to be the, the hero and the main protagonist, but he was so boring to watch. And there was that whole subplot about him with this boy who just happened to get lost on a train with him. Like, first of all, those parents are irresponsible, and second of all, it ends with nothing. Literally, like, 20 minutes after that point, the boy is reunited with his parents inexplicably, and nothing comes of it. So what's the point? It was just like a waste of... I mean, I would have felt just as compelled if on the train, when it was falling and this people were dying, if uh, Ford had just, I don't know, grabbed a woman who was falling. I re or like, stopped her from falling off. I really didn't care that much that it was just a, another boy, because I'm sure plenty have died in the course of the monsters approaching and crushing through buildings and so on. So what does it matter? Aside just to make Aaron's character appear more of a hero, even though we've already established that the reason they probably put that in was because he's such a dull character. <sighs> just my opinion of him, but he was so tedious to watch, and he was the generic monotone soldier going, I'm doing this for my family, I'm doing this because... Insert any, any military movie cliche you want here of a story, just any of them will probably fit. Because he was monotone, he was dull, he was... He wasn't interesting. Brian Cranston's character was compelling. I was really interested. He'd been studying the creature's calls for 15 years. And he understood that they were mating calls and so on. And then nothing came of it because... Like, if, if they'd introduced Brian Cranston to the military about this, like, earlier, that could have been a really interesting, like, first half. And then the second half is when the monsters are really going at it, and it's like full-on, all cylinders blazing, and they could have formed a plot around that. For example, I don't know, say they try and stop the mating process so that the eggs can't be born, so the creature can't be fertilised, but that involves sacrifice and so on. I mean, st stuff like that. A plot like that might have been more interesting. I don't really know, because I'm not a filmmaker. But it could have been more interesting than the plot that was presented here, which was... Um, he'd been slaying them for 15 years, he, he got back into the radiation zone, there was no radiation, blah blah blah, they're covering something up, blah blah blah, and then it was very interesting, and then he dies. Oh well. And the other thing that was really annoying was, he only seems to speak and act in trailer tones, so they could use that as marketing fuel, like the hand over the mouth, the, the a very angry, determined, um, sort of ticked off husband because his wife has been killed by whatever this thing was, uh, and, you know, so on. It, it, it's a very interesting developed story, and I was compelled by a story. As soon as it swaps to just Ford, I was bored out of my mind. I was really just looking forward to the next time the Muto would show up or Godzilla would show up. Just having them on screen was good enough for me. Well, good enough compared to having Ford on the screen the entire time. And, and it was just, it was that sort of, and, what am I trying to say here, it was, it was that kind of boredom that compelled me to just not enjoy the film as much as I would have probably if the story had been more dumbed down or more refined to a different character or, or just betterly written, cause, or just written better, rather. Because in like the story, basically the military are learning out with the nuclear warhead, close proximity, and they said minimal fallout to San Francisco. You're talking about millions of people and it's a minimal fallout risk. And their interest was the civilians. I call your bluff, sir, because it's probably rubbish. Garbage, spewing rubbish of garbage, of rubbish, of stuff. But it, w it wasn't 
it wasn't interesting, it wasn't important because it was stupid. I would rather they'd actually try and lure the creatures together. That would have been smarter. Because if I knew that nuclear warheads couldn't scratch Godzilla at all, I wouldn't even bother issuing my guys for nuclear weapons. I'd say, try and, I don't know, get the attention of the monsters and move them together. Have them attack each other. You know, divide and conquer. Smart military planning. Not have a nuclear warhead within fallout distance of a major city. Who had that as a good idea? Plus, these things eat nuclear warheads for breakfast. Literally. Oh, goodness. Anyway, a couple more characters that were completely weak was the wife. She was just there for... Um, I don't know, I guess a reason for Ford to go in this, because he, he's saying he wants to get kill the monsters to, <clears throat> you know, save his wife and his son, um, who, th there was a subplot there about getting him to safety while she stayed behind to help others, and, you know, you're always worried about whether or not she was going to make it out and stuff like that, but, like, when has there been a film like this that's actually killed off the wife? I can't really recall one off the top of my head. If you can, comment below. Um, but th that was just the problem. She was a completely weak character. I wasn't compelled by her story. I wasn't interested particularly, and it just sort of fell apart, really. Anyway, final verdict. What do I think of the film as a whole? Um, well, I'll get into that. I'll just narrow down the positives and negatives. Negatives, weak story, weak protagonist and sub-characters of that protagonist. Good Brian Cranston moments, in terms of that, but... Most other characters were quite weak, aside from the uh, the doctor who was studying Godzilla and following him. He was pretty good. He was like, "Let them fight." He is the Alpha Predator, and, and stuff like that. That that was that was that was good. I really enjoyed that. There were a few moments, I guess, with some characters that were quite interesting, but there was that Jurassic Park moment, like you know when uh, Goldblum is wiping the screen to see the T Rex. Comedy for me, the Goldblum. Uh, there was a scene like that with a bus driver, which I was just like, as, as soon as I saw it, I was like, Jurassic Park, Jurassic Park, Jeff Goldblum, Wiping Screen, first film, iconic, why is that in this film? You know, there, there, there were quite a lot of rip-off moments, which I felt like, it was because I was a, like, I'm quite a hard, a die-hard fan of monster movies in general, so that I like, things like that, I tend to pick up on a lot easier, but that was just... My suspension of disbelief was sort of shoved to the side for a, a moment after that, because I was just thinking Jurassic Park, Jurassic Park, Jurassic Park, Jurassic Park, which I know I shouldn't be saying, considering the 1998 piece of garbage was literally just a big T-Rex. Like, there was no... Godz I didn't see any Godzilla in the 1998 Godzilla. And, like, the, J the Japanese called him Zilla and had him and Godzilla fought, and they really showed that Zilla what they thought with having their Godzilla atomic breathe him and then throw him across a city and smash him into, was it the, uh, it was like, opera, I don't know if it was set in Australia or not, maybe the Sydney Opera House, um, but yeah, like, the, the Japanese, they, they know how to make a Godzilla film, okay, no need to stomp on their legacy. So, yeah, I like, I also like the new Godzilla, um, but other negatives, yeah, military was stupid, um, and the cutaways. The cutaways for me was the biggest kick in the face, because that was just, every time someone was going to go down, you were like, oh, this is going to be interesting, I can't wait to see this. Cut away. Okay. Oh my goodness, the, the monsters are in this city, they're about to stand off. Cut away. Okay. I'll just twiddle my thumbs and wait for a compelling moment. Oh my goodness, the monsters, all three of them at once. How How is this going to go down? Cut away. <sighs> and you just had that feeling of anger when it happened, because they did it so much. So I suppose that's all the negatives. Listing down positives. Brian Cranston. <laughs> just Brian Cranston. Uh, the subplots regarding Cranston's character were all good. The... You know, the Japanese guy, really sticking it to the face of those military who said, we're interested in the civilians. Yeah, this was my uh, father's watch. Stopped at 9.15 on 
the, um, the date, and, and then he's like, the, the military guy's like, Hiroshima, and then the other guy just looks, and then the Japanese guy just looks at him, and then walks off. Powerful scenes, well executed. And Godzilla and the Muto themselves, the creatures were awesome. Like, Godzilla was beautifully rendered, he looks awesome, and the personality of Godzilla was well executed, very well executed. And at the end, you finally see it, the moment you've all been waiting for, Godzilla's atomic breath. Awesome. Like, my, my, my inner child was just screaming when that happened, because that was awesome, that was like, those moments with the atomic breath were like, yeah, this is awesome. I think everyone in the world should see this, because it's awesome. There is no other word. I know I use that word a lot, and I know the youth use that word a lot, but it is awesome, simply. So, final verdict of Godzilla, the 2014 version. Much better than the 98 version, can say that as an absolute fact. Final verdict, it gets a 7 out of 10. It's a good film, it's a great film, if not only for the moments with Godzilla and the atomic breath, especially the end bit when he gets the female Muto, and I'm thinking a bit of King Kong at that moment, and just breathes, the, he just looks down and breathes the atomic breath right down her, she explodes, her body falls, he holds up the head, and boom, he just growls at the top of his lungs, and that was mega ultra awesome, because there is just... You know, you can't compare that. You can't compare. You can't compete. No Godzilla film, in my opinion, has come even close to competing with that moment. Overall, 7 out of 10. Great movie. I recommend you see it. I've been the Banter Guy. I'll see you guys later. Like, comment, and subscribe for more reviews in the future. Goodbye.